Hi, in today's video, we are going to study data binding in D3.js. Data binding is basically binding data elements with DOM elements. The methods that are used for data binding are data, enter, exit, and data. Today, we are going to study data method. Data is basically used to join data with some selected DOM element. D3 is data driven. That's why data function is used to join the specified array or set of values which are stored inside array with the some DOM elements. And it also returns updated selection. That means after joining or after binding a data array with some elements, it returns the new selection as a selection of elements. D3 works similar way for data binding from an array from CSV, CSV, JSON and XML file. Say for example, consider an HTML body like this, which is consisting of 3p tags which are completely empty. Now within this p tag, if I wish to add some data, say my data is stored inside an array which is declared using where my data is equal to first parameter is hello, second parameter is welcome and third parameter is good day. Now this element must get binded with my p tag and whatever the elements are there in an array must get displayed between these p tags. So basically what we can do for binding is v 3 dot select all p. So all p tags which are there in my body will get selected. And after selection, we simply put period time and data function. So we will write dot data and within the bracket, we will write my data, which is nothing but name of an array. Here, one thing must be clear that for data binding, it is compulsory to have an array. If you have value in a simple variable, data binding is not going to work. That's why we will simply write dot data my array which is stored inside variable my data. Now after this particular statement only p tags will get binded with elements of an array. But if we wish to change the text of p tag which is considered or which is currently now blank, I must update something with the help of text method. So text method is going to get applied over all selected p tags which are now binded with my data array. Now within text we will write function of data. Now what is this function of data? Function of data is basically taking two arguments. First argument is d or data and second argument is i. Function of data is working or will work or will execute it the number of times how many elements are there in an array. Say if in this example there are three elements in array, so this function of data will get executed three times. First time it will get executed for hello. The term or the value hello will be stored inside variable data and i is in an index of data. So basically data is an array which now contains my data which is binded using data method and i is an index of an element for which function is getting executed. So here whatever value we get we will simply return that value. So first time data will store hello and that will get returned. So in place of function the value hello will be substituted and that hello will be set as a text to first key tag. For second time, data will be storing value or string welcome and that string will get returned. So in place of function of data, the string welcome will be substituted and this text function will have data as welcome and that will be set as text for second paragraph. And third time, good day will be stored inside this data 
and this good day will be substituted over here and it will be set as a text for third tag so complete html code will look like this within the body we have three simple or mcp tags within script we have one variable my data which is an array of three values or three elements we first select all p tags and within this p tag we are binding the data with the help of data method to my data array and we are changing the text of p tag with the help of text function and this text is actually function of data which is simply returning data itself so whatever the value hello welcome and good day will be there that will get substituted for text method this is how simple data binding works so this is my file which is consisting of the mcp tags within body and within script we have one variable my data which is an array type hello welcome and good day i will show you the output of this page first as you can see there is no data that is get displayed because we have neither bind it nor changed its text so here as you can see all the tags are there but they are empty and variable which is an array consisting of three elements simply we will do weekly dot select all p tag within this selection we will bind the data with the help of data method and the data we wish to bind is stored inside my data and let me change the text of p so this text is actually function of data and index both and within this function we are going to simply return data or d itself i'll put semicolon as an end of my state okay we save and refresh as you can see the data or text within the paragraph is getting updated as hello welcome and good day if you wish to see them individually so before we return we simply put console dot log and we will return the cell so every time before it gets returned its value we can see its value in console dot log now as you can see over this console window first time the function is going to return hello in a d and second time it is storing welcome and third time it is storing good day another example that i also wish to cover using data binding is that we can draw bar chart using data binding let me show you how this bar chart will Drawn. We will open up a new file now. Within this, say for example, instead of P tag, I have series of rectangles. Five rectangles are there. Here in my data, I have different sizes of data. Say thirty. And I wish to draw different different rectangles of this different different size. So I basically need uh, to have five rectangles and we have five data. So I can easily find by selecting all rectangles with selecting all data. But here I wish to draw each rectangles one after another of some different different size. So first of all, let me do first step. That is, I first select all my rectangles. and i will bind it with function and uh, the different attributes that i must set is for rectangle we must set different different attributes those attributes are is x coordinate four attributes that we must change that is x coordinate y coordinate x width and height now you all know that uh, rectangle must appear one after another so the x coordinate of the rectangle that is placement from left must be same 
I wish to have all these rectangles that is 20 pixels from them. That's why 20. Uh, width of this function or width of each rectangle must be of data size. That's why width will be my function of data. So I will write function of D and in this bracket I am simply going to return D. So whatever the value of D is here will be set as width. So for first rectangle width will be 30, second rectangle width will be 50 and so on. That's why they will be set accordingly. Now Y coordinate. I wish to have all these rectangles one after another. So Y coordinate of first rectangle is very less whereas for second rectangle this Y coordinate is much more larger. So simply again this is my function of data as well as index. So data and index both will be used because index is nothing but the position whether it is first element, second element, third element or fourth so on. So I am going to use uh, its value. So that is return i into say 100. So for first element index will be 0. So 0 into 100 will be substitute return that is 0 as y coordinate of first rectangle. For second uh, value index will be 1 and 1 into 100 will be e, that is 100 will be the y coordinate of another rectangle. For third element, index will be 2, that's why 2 into 100, that is equal to 200, will be the y coordinate of third rectangle and so on. So, this is the nothing but changing the y coordinate of each and every rectangle. Now, height of each bar or each rectangle must be same. Say, for example, height of each rectangle was 30 pixels. So, I will save this document and see how my bar chart works. Data minus bar chart okay. uh, so one thing you must know that within body if you write rect attack or any SVG so tag it is not going to work unless and until you enclose them within an SVG opening and closing that is the important thing that you must know Okay, now as you can see, uh, bars are very, only two bars are there, right? Uh, it is just because of this SVG size. The size of SVG is very small, and uh, but within this, as you can see, there are all five rectangles, but not, they are not getting this way. So I must set its size, say width is equal to 7. Now, as you can see, my SVG is now greater area, and in this area, I can see there are five bars. First bar is 30, then 50, then 40. Now, these bars are very less fun. I want these bars to have relative values, but uh, they must exhibit longer in size. So, instead of just uh, having your width as function of data when you return d I can simply multiply this value by 10 so instead of 30 uh, not 30 pixel wide rectangle will be there there will be 300 pixel wide rectangle so save this and change uh, notice the change in the size as you can see the largest bar is still second one which is having largest value for c and the smallest bar is 10 value which is nothing but your third element so data binding is important for visualization when you bind your data with your graphics and these graphical representation elements are relative to their values of data which is bind with them and uh, we can obviously change their position their uh, color and their representation easily with the help of SVG thank you everyone for watching this video this is Thank